So hi, uh, my name is Gert Hengeveld. Uh, I'm here to talk to you about Storybook. So who here is already using Storybook? I'm kind of expecting most hands, and that's true. Uh, so Storybook really is uh, super popular these days with front-end development. It's basically the industry standard, uh, and I'm really happy to see that, well, most of you are actually like already uh, using it. Um, so I do hope that I'll be able to uh, share some new insights into how you can use Storybook in your workflows and how you can improve uh, how you do UI development using Storybook. So hi, I'm Gert Hengeveld. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter, uh, Gert Hengeveld. I'm a staff software engineer at Chromatic. Chromatic is a company. Uh, it's basically the company behind Storybook. Uh, Storybook is an open source project. Uh, always has been, always will be. Uh, but we are building a platform on top of Storybook, and we, that's why we are heavily invested in Storybook and basically have a, a team on staff to work on Storybook full-time. Uh, that team, by the way, is currently uh, chilling in Barcelona uh, for a well-deserved uh, retreat. Uh, so that's why I'm, I am uh, here on stage today, uh, rather than my colleague Jan, who was originally supposed to give this talk. So... Who remembers working like this? Uh, you, when you do front-end development, you got to spin up your entire platform. Uh, every time you make a code change, you got to recompile your stuff. Uh, when, uh, when you finally like, merged and shipped your UI, two weeks later, a designer raises their hands and says, hey, this doesn't look right. Uh, and then, well, it's already shipped, but you got to rework it anyway. Well, modern UIs are assembled using components these days. I'm pretty sure that probably all of you will be using a component-based front-end framework or library. Um, that's the way of the world these days in front-end development. Uh, for good reason. Like it's, it's more efficient. Uh, you'll be able to uh, iterate much faster. You will de deliver higher quality uh, front-end and uh, maintenance is uh, less painful because you'll be able to pinpoint uh, bugs at the component level. Yet, UI development has so many challenges. I'm not even going to go over this list, and this is not even an exhaustive list. Complex UIs are super complex these days, or at least they can be, uh, with interconnected behavior and uh, data flowing throughout your app and state management that you need to figure out. Um, and then there's like uh, multiple devices and browsers and everything need to, that you need to take care of. Um, so, and also, existing UI development workflows are kind of clunky. Uh, so say you have a shopping cart and you want to work on that cart. You, what, what happens if you have a spinning app, you've got to like click through your app to find that particular screen or state. And then if you're only working on this checkout button right there, then it's kind of clunky to go throughout that entire flow, click here, click there, and then finally you reach where, whatever screen you want to reach and work on. Um, so that's not really workable. Uh, with Storybook, you can isolate all of the use cases of your component uh, by writing a story for each of the variants of, of, that, of this particular screen. And that allows you to dive directly into the, the place where you are, where you want to be focused on, where you want to work on if you're doing, uh, when you're doing UI development. Uh, and designers, they, they, they have basically have been doing this for a long time. Uh, they use what we call sticker sheets, right? So this is a Figma uh, tool that most designers use these days. And, well, they, des they design their, all the components and all the variants of those components, typically, like, on these, uh, on these pages like that. Well, Storybook is kind of like a sticker sheet for components. So live components, not just the design, but actually something that has behavior and can inter you can interact with. Um, and with Storybook, you can build those components in isolation, meaning that you don't have to spin up an entire plat application to, be work to work on your UI, uh, but instead uh, you pass in mock data and render your component with that set of data and all the, vari the variants of it. Uh, it allows you to make a catalog of all those variants, so that kind of gives you an overview of the complexity of your entire front-end uh, app, the entire front-end you can uh, 
better gauge the complexity that's in the app. Uh, and then it helps you document the compo your component library. So if you have multiple teams working on a front end or you're reusing components in different places or different applications, uh, you can uh, use Storybook to document uh, how to use those components in various ways. Uh, and finally, you can like, test uh, the, the complex UIs and interactions right inside of Storybook and share it with stakeholders. Uh, in the end of the day, uh, you can have st Storybook be exported to a static website that you can upload anywhere to the web and then share the link with designers, product managers, whoever. So the nice thing about Storybook is you can stress test all the variations of all the states of your component. So here's an, one example of a uh, product card for, or a restaurant card in this case for, uh, for in this case, uh, the Burger King with like a default state, a new state, a closed state, and a loading state. But there's also maybe you have a dark mode and a light mode in your app. How do you deal with that? You can quickly see how the, the variations of a component like kind of grow exponentially. Uh, in fact, um, these are a whole bunch of things that you might be want to uh, take into account. So like a loading state, uh, disabled state, in progress state, error states, uh, edge cases, like having very long text. How does it wrap around to the next line? Or missing data. There is like a, a user, and they just signed up. They don't have a profile, info they don't have profile information yet. Or a context of being signed in, signed out, uh, an A-B test perhaps, or an offline mode that you need to deal with. And then all the combinations thereof. So you can quickly see how exponentially the, the variance of your UI uh, like changes uh, over time as you add more, uh, more functionality. So Storebook helps you to keep your components organized. Uh, basically, here, this is a, uh, the example of Storybook. With on the left-hand side, there's this restaurant card component with four stories on it. So those are four variants. Uh, basically the same variants you saw earlier. And then at the top of the screen, there are some tools that allow you to, for example, switch between the light mode and the dark mode. And basically, like I mentioned before, Storybook is now the industry standard. I really see uh, engineers, front-end engineers, listing Storybook on their resumes, really. Uh, and it's, it's, it's more and more a requirement when you Want to, when you want to join a company, uh, that they say, like, it would be nice if you have storybook experience, right? And it's also not just for boring apps. You can do really cool stuff with, uh, with uh, storybook. This is a super, uh, super uh, configured storybook with, like, a very different styling and uh, different views of uh, a camera angle in this case. I've seen Age of Empires inside of a storybook. Uh, you can use it for game development as well. So in March, we released Storybook 7.0, which is like the biggest milestone for Storybook in two and a half years. Uh, and we're already really working hard to uh, deliver Storybook 7.1. So Storybook 7, uh, includes a whole bunch of really major uh, workflow improvements uh, and also like a load of bug fixes and, uh, and getting rid of old craft, so to say. So here's the this development cycle for uh, we envision with Storybook, where Storybook really helps you. Uh, so the development part, the testing part, and the documentation part of your front-end development lifecycle. So let's talk about develop first. Um, so like I mentioned, Storybook helps you develop UI components, complete UI, user interfaces. Uh, so it's not just your button, but it's entire screens and pages and wizards and all that stuff you can build inside of Storybook. Uh, it, it does it by helping you work faster and with confidence uh, by doing all that stuff in isolation. By the way, it works with all the major frameworks uh, like React, Angular, Vue, Vite, Lit, all of that stuff. Um, so, and how that works is you capture all your component use cases or variants or states as what we call a story. So in this case, like you have various types of data, you mix them together and you 
that render that means your component renders in a particular way. Well, if your component renders differently, we want to have a story for that variant, uh, so you can like catalog it. So, writing a story, what does it look like? Uh, this might be already very familiar with uh, for most folks who are using Storybook, though there is uh, a new way to write stories in Storybook 7.0. Uh, which is w w what we call CSF3, Component Story Format 3. It's the, basically this, the syntax that you see here for defining stories. Um, so what you see here is we have a default export. By the way, did you notice there is no React or Angular or Vue specific code in this file? This is vanilla JavaScript. It's basically just a bunch of data, a bunch of exports, a bunch of objects. Uh, that is intentional with CSF3. We want stories to be like uh, usable in like with all the various frameworks and not specific to one particular one. Uh, it also allows us to like build more tooling on top of CSF and make it more portable so that CSF can be used by other tools as well. So you see a default export here, which is basically some what we call the meta, the meta object. And it references the components we are working on. In this case, just a button. And then over here, there's a story for the primary variant of this button. And you can have like a secondary and a large and a small, whatever. All the variants you want. And each of them are an export, a named export in ESM. Uh, and the meta is always the default export. And the nice thing about this is it gives you, so Storybook gives you this quick feedback loop. It allows you to just use your, have your IDE on one side, you type, you type some code, save your file, and Storybook automatically refreshes with uh, the new variant, right? So when you change McDonald's, Burger King to McDonald's, you see the instant update on the other side of the screen. So that's the development part of Storybook. Now I guess we get into what I think is the really most interesting part, is testing. So testing with Storybook, means you can simulate user behavior like click and hover and type uh, all from within the story file that you already have. So the old-fashioned way of doing UI testing in the sense uh, of code testing like this and behavior testing is basically unit test. Write a unit test for your component. Each component is a unit. Um, uh, for example, the dialog to delete custo uh, a, a customer. And we have, uh, this is the Jest syntax or Jasmine syntax for describe, and then it shoots open the dialog. So we first render this component, then we fire an event saying click on this button, and then we expect the screen to have, uh, the, the document to have the are you sure text in it. Uh, this is pretty reasonable, I think, and it's been reasonable for a very long time, uh, and it works reasonably well. However, a downside with Jest is it relies on Node and JS DOM. So on the left-hand side here, you see uh, your Node script to execute your test, like you just uh, run npm, run Jest, or something like that, um, and it gives you a nice overview of all the tests that you ran, but what happens when something breaks, right? When you get an error, you, you're encount you encounter this basically a stack trace or like a dump of the DOM state of the test at that point in time. And it kind of tries to tell you, hey, this is where it goes wrong. But especially if you have pretty large DOMs or like an SVG in there, uh, then it kind of, the output gets really long and it's really hard to see exactly what's wrong. Um, and, it, and this is all you get. This is this, the final snapshot of, oh, this is where the test broke but it might have broken earlier on in the set of instructions that you gave. Um, so what if you do all of that in the browser? Here's the same component with a delete customer button, and uh, in the, on the left-hand side, you see the, see the story for that button with what we call a play function. This play function is essentially a function that runs as soon as the story is, the component that's re is done rendering, we run this play function, and that thing contains instructions on like, how to interact with the component and then make some assertions about, uh, about the state of the component in the end. 
right? You click this button and you actually see it open the pop-up. And you see this nice little list of interactions down there with the, with the interaction that it ran. So this is the storybook way, interaction tests. So you write your tests, not in a separate test file, but in a story file. Uh, this is still powered by testing library in Jest, which is not changed from before. So we are basically standing on the shoulders of the giants here, uh, not reinventing the wheel or anything. It's just a slightly different way of using testing library in Jest. Uh, so we give you a, like a visual debugger for your uh, Jest tests and your testing library instructions. Uh, and in fact, you can step through those interactions and debug them right inside the browser. Here's how that works in code. So uh, first off, we have what we call a play function. So in this export const submitted is a story for a submitted state of a button, of a search form in this case. Uh, and then that play function gets invoked whenever uh, the story is done, render, the component is done rendering. And then we simulate some events on uh, on that component after it has rendered. And then uh, what's important to note here is that we actually wrap around testing library. So we, there's a at storybook slash testing library package. Uh, the reason we did that way is that we actually instrument the testing library functions and methods so that we can enable the step through debugging and to make sure that it works well in the browser. <clears throat> so this is what it looks like then inside of your storybook. It can run in any browser. In fact, it even works if you have a static export of your storybook published on the web somewhere. You can still run the interactions and see the results of them. So you get an interactions log uh, of all the stuff that happened there. Um, and moreover, you can make assertions lay, uh, in your play function as well. And uh, in fact, if you use add-on actions, which uh, is for like cl uh, click handlers and stuff, we automatically spy on those actions so that you can make assertions on whether it has been called. And then we give you playback controls as well. So you can even like do time travel debugging right inside of Storybook. You click there and it jumps to that state. And the awesome thing about this is it all happens in the browser you already have, the browser you're using to develop in, right? So you can do things like inspect elements. You can inspect elements even if you're midway through your, your interactions. And then use the browser dev tools as you would always use your browser dev tools. But you might be asking, okay, cool, I've done all this stuff in the browser, but I want to run it in CI. Well, that's where the test runner comes in. We have a node package, it's called the test runner. Uh, it's powered by Jest and Playwright under the covers, uh, which allows you to run uh, these tests, also like the entire test suite uh, via the command line, uh, even with like watch mode and stuff. Uh, you might be thinking, oh, but Node and, and JS DOM were awful, right? Well, for one, we don't use JS DOM, we use Playwright, which means we spin up an actual browser. JS DOM has some a lot of caveats, um, but an actual browser uh, through Playwright is a much better way to go about it, much more reliable. Um, and then the, basically how it works is that the test runner converts stories into tests. So it takes your, your story definition and basically auto-generates a just test file, the thing that you saw before with the describe and the it. Uh, it auto-generates that, and then it runs that uh, in Playwright. So you can do that for like a simple state, basically just to check whether or not it rendered correctly without any interactions, or you can use it with interactions to verify, okay, did the interactions run correctly? Nice thing about Playwright is it can, you can use it for cross-browser testing. So you can test in Chrome and Firefox and Safari, right? And one additional thing that we think is really cool and really powerful is what happens if something breaks in CI? What happens is you can actually, you get a link, you can click that link, and bam, it just opens your storybook, live storybook, and you see exactly at what point it broke. Visually, you can inspect element again, all the stuff. So 
no node shenanigans. You don't want to be stuck inside of the node context. You actually want to jump into a physical, like an actual browser and try it out yourself, see how it failed. If you want more, you can uh, use an experimental thing called hooks uh, for pre-render and post-render. Uh, and uh, one way to use that is with accessibility testing. Use it with Axe to automatically check for accessibility violations while you are already testing your UI. You can even have it generate code coverage reports so that you are sure that, oh, I tested all the variants of my components, all the variations. So you can generate reports like that. In fact, you can integrate that with CodeCoff, for example, on CI, so you can have it prevent uh, it from merging uh, your, your PR. And then there's Chromatic. So I mentioned before, Chromatic is basically the company I work for. Uh, and we've built a tool on top of Storybook that is, we do visual regression testing. So essentially what we do is we take screenshots of all of your UI, and every time you make a code change, we take new screenshots and we can pinpoint exactly where there are visual differences between the old version and the new version. In fact, we even do it on the pull request level where we say your main branch and your feature branch and we show side by side exactly what's different, what, what would change visually if you were to merge this pull request. Uh, and you can ask uh, your coworkers to review those changes before you merge the PR and get our feedback from stakeholders. We synchronize with GitHub, GitLab, Bitbucket, uh, so you can block your PR from getting merged until Reviews have passed. So that's the, the testing workflow. Now get into the documentation part. So documenting with Storybook, uh, you can do that in multiple ways. So we have uh, MDX2 support now. So MDX is this kind of markdown format. Uh, and what's cool about it is you can then mix match just text, markdown text content with actual rendered components. Uh, so live previews of components. We released a new architecture for it, we streamlined the UX for it, and there's a bunch of what we call doc blocks that you can reuse. It's basically like a component that we provide. Uh, you hook it up to your own component and then it renders, for example, a table of props. Uh, of all the variation, like the, 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 the properties that your, your component would, uh, would use. Uh, you can use that to like, create entire pages. So a lot of people, what they do is they, they don't just have a, uh, a component with like a rendered component in Storybook, but for each component also a documentation page uh, that, uh, that explain how to use this component, for example. So that's the documentation part. Uh, you can use MDX for that, or you can use, uh, uh, like, the, and you can use all the doc blocks that we provide to do that. To, for example, uh, document the color theme of your, of your app. Um, we also now have a thing called auto docs. So what that means is we can automatically generate the documentation based on the stories that you already have. So this is what it essentially looks like, is it auto-generates this docs, this yellow-ish uh, icon with docs for each component, and that, exp that contains like a live view of the component, a code snippet on how to use it, a props table with all the properties that it uh, can, uh, can receive, and all the story uh, variants that we have defined for it. And here's a fully custom MDX story. So like you, can, and you, and you can actually live develop that inside of your storybook as you go. So you can decide, like mix match on your own, include your Figma design inside the documentation page. So you can see, them, uh, see that right along with the live render of it. Speaking of Figma, there is a whole bunch of integrations with that. Uh, we have a add-on designs uh, uh, package for Storybook that allows you to show your Figma design inside of a uh, add-on panel inside of Storybook. Uh, so you can always reference the design uh, while you are working on a piece of UI. There is um, uh, an add or plugin for Figma so that the designer can basically see the real-time live implementation of a story 
while they're iterating on the design of it so they can see, okay, this is still wrong or this needs to be fixed or whatever, uh, they, however they want to use that. That's Figma integrations. Chromatic also in integrates with Figma, showing you the screenshot of a component, the live view of a component, and the Figma design of a component on the same page. So that's the cycle as a whole. Uh, on top of that, we've been like working on the ecosystem around Storybook. Not just the workflow that you use on a day-to-day -day basis, but the things that will impact Storybook as a project. So uh, tools, we inter introduce the tool sets for the community to build their own Storybook integrations. So uh, for example, we massively improved the integration with Next.js and Svelte. And we also introduced Quick and SolidJS uh, support as well. Actually, what well, we didn't, the community did, based on the tooling that we gave them. We introduced Ecosystem CI, which is basically a status page. Like you might be familiar with the uptime status page, a thing that we have. We do something similar where we nightly run a build against all the variations of Storybook for Angular, for React, with Vite, with Webpack, with Webpack 4, Webpack 5. Uh, all sorts of combinations, and we check, test that every day to see if it still compiles and works properly. And there's been multiple occasions where we found that some other library broke their thing uh, in combination with Storybook, and we actually patched their package to make sure that Storybook still functions properly. So Storybook 7 brings hundreds of improvements, a lot of improvements. Um, and if you want to get started with Storybook on a new project, so you have a uh, React project, Angular project, whatever, uh, use MPX Storybook at latest init to initialize a new project in there. It will auto-detect auto a lot of things, a bunch of things. Uh, if you already have an existing Storybook, just run MPX Storybook at latest upgrade, uh, and that will automatically detect everything that you have already and run code mods to automatically migrate your code to the new, ver the, the new way of doing things. Uh, in fact, the Storybook 7 upgrade is mostly a hands-off thing. You don't have to like, manually do a whole bunch of things. It's mostly automated at this point. 